Good day, great tens. Welcome to another lesson with Kumalo and the Geography Sangoma here in Swanes South. I hope you've enjoyed your question one, paper one revision video on atmosphere. Right now, I'm going to take you through geomorphology uh, 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 of grade 10. Now, without a wastage of time, remember on the previous video questions i've shown you the structure of paper one grade 10 that it consists of three questions question one atmosphere we have dealt with atmosphere out of 60 marks today we are dealing with what with geomorphology question two out of 60 marks now we know our paper is out of 150 for those who are writing tomorrow or maybe you're writing on a different date uh you have to understand and get to know this Questions to be covered in question two under geomorphology question two will be the structure of the earth. Uh, it will be the plate tectonics, folding and faulting, and earthquakes, also including the volcanoes, great times. So those are the topics that you have done in term two. So those are the questions that, or those are the topics that will be on question number two. Now, let's look at the internal structure of the earth. Remember, what you have to always remember, grade 10, is that you must know how to label this. You must know uh, which layer comes after which layer. Remember when we said the structure of the, uh, of the earth, we're looking at how it looks like. So, the, earth in, the internal structure of the earth looks like this. Now, you can see we have got an inner core, an outer core, a mantle, and a crust. So, you must know all those uh, four parts or four layers of the internal structure of the uh, of the earth also know the characteristics that the the crust it is 6 to 90 kilometers thick and it is solid it has solid rock and then the mantle is two uh, 2900 kilometers uh, 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 thick and then it has molten rock which is liquid the rock in liquid and then outer core it has 2250 kilometers dense but it is liquid and then in inner core it's 1200 uh, thickness uh, which is a solid then we get to understand now the crust can be divided into two types. So you were taught that the crust can be divided into two types, which we, we, we say it is the continental crust uh, known as the seal and the oceanic crust known as the sima. So this is the seal and the sima. So the seal, the seal and the sima, those are the two ty uh, types uh, of uh, 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 the, the earth's crust. So the continental crust and the oceanic crust is the inner and thinner dense layer. So the continental the, the continental Continental crust it lies under the, the 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 continents only. It lies under oceans and continents uh, uh, crust. And then it, uh, the main uh, uh, important thing that you must know that it is mainly granite and mainly basalt. And the gabbro uh, 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 is the example of that. So that is. That be asking your examination tomorrow to say uh, to define or to uh, uh, identify or to distinguish these things now the classification of rocks the rocks of the earth come in different sizes colors shapes rocks can be classified into three main uh, rock types now remember once you have done your 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 structure of the earth knowing how the form the, the rocks they form now we come to classification of rocks now there are three types of rocks that i want you to know for tomorrow's exam that will be the igneous rock the sedimentary rock the metamorphic rock so those are the rocks that i want you to know now the igneous rock how is it formed magma rises through the crust cools and crystallizes and then sedimentary rocks the sediments deposited by wind water and ice build up in layers and then the metamorphic rock igneous and sedimentary rocks changed by heat and pressure so now here are the examples of all these types of rocks so the most the most important thing is to know the type of rock and how it is formed and be able to ident to identify it if it's given on a diagram and then we move into intrusive igneous activity now the word intrusive it means in so under the earth's surface so in what so we are saying under the earth's surface so this is an activity that is taking pl pl place under the earth's surface so the igneous the, uh, the intrusive the intrusive igneous activity occurs when an, an, a, a, numera, a numerous mass of magma does not reach the surface and solidifies and hardens. The figure below shows how different intrusions form. So an intrusive igneous activity occurs when a numerous mass of magma does not reach the surface and it solidifies, solidifies which means it hardens. Now, there are three that I want you to 
uh, take note of is the lancolith, the patholith, and the lompolith. They are very important for your examination grade, grade tens. Now, a lancolith, a mushroom-shaped intrusion, it pushes the overlying strata upwards, and then the patholith is the largest of all the intrusive forms. It is usually made of granite, and then the lompolith, it is the magma, intrudes between sedimentary layers. The layer underneath cannot support the weight and sinks down a saucer-shaped intrusion is formed. So now, the lampolith it is saucer-shaped, the lancolith is mushroom-shaped, and the batholith, it is the largest of them all. So you must know the intrusive, the type of intrusive uh, igneous rocks, the uh, uh, intrusions that are found uh, under the Earth's surface. Now, how do we bring this thing into map work? Application on topographic maps, the questions are based on the map. You can see, would you regard the slope at Pearl rock as steep or gentle? Give reasons for your answer. What type of rock is pearl rock? A pearl rock is batholith, lancolith, or a, a lompolith. Explain how pearl rock was formed. So, you see, this is how now this question 3 uh, is going to be integrated in question 1. This is how this question 3 can be integrated in, in, in question 1. Then, then another thing that you have learned great terms was the change in the position of the continents over time. That one we call it what? Continental drifting. Alfred Wegner was the first person to notice that the continents fit into each other like a jigsaw puzzle. Now, this was a theory that was found by Alfred Wegner. It talks about continental drifting. Now, what is continental drifting? Continental drift. Uh, drift is the movement of continents over time. So as they are moving apart from each other, we call that continental drifting. And this theory was uh, uh, discovered by uh, Alfred Wegener. Now, what makes us to, to believe this theory? We know that we will talk about the evidence of the movement of continents over time. So how, how, how are we sure that these continents have moved apart over time? We look at things like continents fit in perfectly like a puzzle, the glacier deposits match, and then rock formation match, the fossil remains match. So those are the four things that make that uh, 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 an evidence that these continents were joined as one. So remember the theory of continental drifting. It tells us that this continent, it was a gigantic continent, and then it drifted apart. Now, what evidence do we have to say that, yes, it was a, a same planet, a same continent? It, these are the four uh, 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 evidence that we talk about in geography grade 10. Then we look at the plate tectonics. You also learned about the tectonic plates, great. Ten. I always say that the tectonic plate is more like uh, on, on top of a tectonic plate, it is uh, water and the land. So just like having a, a bowl of milk and pap there. So if you have your milk and your pap, then the milk will represent water and your pap will be land. So what carries that plate of yours uh, will take it as a tectonic plate. So a tectonic plate is always carrying what on top of it? The ocean and the land. Now, what is a tectonic? What is a plate tectonics? The theory that explains the movement of continents is called the plate tectonics. How do plates move? The plates can move away from each other, which is divergent. And then the plates can move towards each other, which is convergent. And then the plates can pass each other uh, 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 other sideways, which is uh, in terms of uh, sliding past through uh, 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 another plate. Then the tectonic plate boundaries, you have to also know great terms, the tectonic plate boundaries, that we've got the conservative uh, transform boundary, we've got uh, that is sliding through another one, the collusion boundary, that is bending a bit, then the constructive, which is the divergent moving apart, the destructive or the subduction, that is, uh, uh, it's more like it is being uplifted on the other one. So these are uh, tectonic plate boundaries that you must know. The four of them, you must understand and no, uh, based on grade 10 work. Now, we also remember that we taught you the concept of folding and faulting. In simple terms, grade 10, I will say that a fault is a crack or and folding, it's when the rock, they, they bend. So now, folding, what is folding? The forces push rock layers together. You can see the number one. There is compression force and then a sit line, which is a downward bend, and an antit line is the it's, it's an upward bend. So when it's like this, when you put your hand like this, when you put your hand like this, so that will be my sit line. 
that will be my anted line sorry and that will be my seat line so the seat line will be the downward bend and the upward bend it is the anti line so which is the upward bend then now when this bending happens that is folding then faulting faulting is a fracture or crack between two blocks of rocks faults allow the block to move relatively to uh, each other there are three types of faults so faulting grade 12 grade 10s it has to do with what it has to do with cracks a fracture so we uh, i have explained that one then how many types of faults do we have we've got a normal uh, fault a reverse fault and a strike split fault so now you can see the tension the, the normal fault it is caused by tension uh, tension forces the reverse fault it is caused by compression forces so tension will be uh, pulling two things apart uh, when they are elastic then it is a uh, tensional force compression you compress them to come together and later they're moving past each other now then intentional intention forces one block slides downward and the other one upwards one block slides upward and the other one downward so you have to understand these gradients they are very important i'm just revising with you with the things that you've done remember we also have have challenges or uh, 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 natural disasters that we learn about in geography one of them it is earthquakes the important things that you need to know about earthquakes is that what is an earthquake what causes an earthquake effects of an earthquake how are earthquakes measured living with earthquakes where earthquakes are found so those are the important things that you must know about the earthquakes grade 10 and then now the important concept that i want you to know for geomorphology it is the fault which is a break in earth's outer layers where the tectonic plates meet a focus the point underground where an earthquake starts an epicenter the point on earth's surface directly above the focus the seismic wave is the invisible waves of energy released by an earthquake a seismograph is an instrument that measures and records earthquakes and the richer scale it is a scale on which the intensity of earthquakes are measured then we look at uh, what is an earthquake and what causes an earthquake an earthquake is a violent shaking of the earth i hope you remember this year there was a bit of a shaking of the earth here in Joburg and uh, uh, here in, in in south africa and then you you, you saw that it was shaking uh, you heard a lot of stories about that then the earth is made up of a giant slowly moving tectonic plates sudden movements where these plates meet causes an earthquake so when these drifting apart of these tectonic plates moving up apart then it causes what we call an earthquake because an earthquake is the violent shaking of the earth so when the earth starts to shake but violently then we call it an earthquake then how do earthquake affect people so you will have to understand that how does this affect us as people now it causes fire electrics and gas pipes are broken it causes fire cracks walls make buildings unsafe broken water mains so collapse high ways cut off the city or towns uh, broken fuel lines that fires especially designed buildings damaged but do not collapse um people get injured or killed brick style signs cra crash onto the street so these are the things that how they affect how the earthquake affects us so when they ask you in an exam to describe or to give how the earthquake can affect us then you refer to things like this it's very important for you to read the question carefully now what can be done to reduce the impact of earthquakes so these are strategies on how to to do what to uh, uh, reduce the impact of the earthquakes now we look at we watch the sea if water pulls back then it's a tsunami locate active fault zone so we can locate active loads a uh, fault zone identify high risk areas predict when it might occur emergency services may take immediate action or put them into place build dams to absorb the shocks strengthen the roads and houses and bridges uh, earthquake resistant buildings so those are the things that we can do in order to reduce the impact we cannot stop the earthquake but we can reduce the impact or the consequences of an earthquake now moving forward 
10. We also learned as the last topic in term 2 that you have learned, it was volcanoes. The structure of volcanoes, now you can see now that there's a material ejected by a volcano. We can see now we have your pipe there, we've got a fissure in the earth, we've got a magma chamber there, we've got a volcanic cone, we've got a lava flow, and all of these uh, you have to remember that you have studied in there are three stages of volcanoes grade 10 uh, looking at the active volcanoes volcanoes that st still erupt and the dormant uh, volcanoes they show no sign of active but are likely to erupt and extinct volcanoes those are volcanoes that will not ever erupt again so it is a dead one you can see it has a nice uh, set face there and that one is sleeping meaning that it can still erupt at any time yes it is sleeping one day is one day then this is an active one it is erupting you see it is very happy and excited that is killing people then the types of volcanoes we've got a cinder cone we've got a composite strato volcano and we've got a shield volcano now you have to understand all these types please and their characteristics i'm not going to go deeper with them but you have to understand and their characteristics and then how do volcanoes affect people volcanoes are tourist attraction diamonds in volcanic pipes uh, river system changed volcanic ash acts as a fertilizer soil fertile soil uh, so all of these so you will choose the negative and choose the positive the positive are those that we can use uh, 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 and it can grow our economy or we can use in our daily life that we uh, we can be it can be profitable to uh, on our lives and then negatively is those that one that they are going to harm us or whatsoever so you have to be able to differentiate between those